So, do you know this year, I was watching Total Forever on YouTube when it was released on January 19th, 2022. All I can say is, this is a very interesting crossover that I watched from the 2003 series that I saw in November 2021. Well, when I was a kid, I grew up with Ninja Turtles. Ever since they returned to the big screens of the UK in 2003, I pretty much seemed to, to give up watching The Simpsons. Although I never seemed to like The Simpsons from my first two years, from 2001 to 2002, life was pretty boring. You know, I was looted, but when I saw the Turtles coming to life, I was hooked on it. But I haven't seen the 1987 series. Back in the heydays of the 1980s, back around 1988 when it premiered, it used to be called Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. But I'm guessing that Shrek and TMNT were like ancestors to each other. I'm guessing just because Daredevil and Alvin and uh, and maybe like Marvel were like kind to each other or DC. Last night I was watching a video about this fan fiction involving around Spider-Man tearing up with the Ninja Turtles and it feels kind of complicated that I don't like Megan Fox or even Andrew Garfield because I got him confused with that tabby cat of the same name. Yeah, I just don't care for these actors. So, now where was I? Let's not waste any time doing this for like, it would take like more than 60 seconds time around right now. The story is simple. The 2003 turtles were held captive by Hunter Mason and his purple dragons. But it turns out that the 2003 turtles have rescued them from Hunt's grip. However, with the help of Splinter, they realize they've, they are not from here, from their world. They have come from another world called the 987 world. However, when the two worlds were about to collide, it gets complicated that back of the tank, no drone, a curious 987 shredder and a curious Krang, who both disappeared on Dimension X, have returned in the caverns, experiencing modern day obscurity. Only to realize they used their transmat device to set Krell free from his frosty imprisonment on Morgau Tau. That sounds very interesting of how he was put on thin ice like scratch from Ice Age. And it was the most shocking moment I've ever imagined in DMT history. Yeah, it's kind of a terrible way to end a show like this. Or it's like a... It's like trying to be a season finale that backfired in the wrong direction. Yeah. But anyways, just because I saw these two Utrons showing up, why would two Utrons be worse than one? That's weird. Now, Krell decides to pretty much hijack their technodrome by taking away their technology so he could just conduct his experiment to creating a mutant army out of foot soldiers and some gangsters to destroy the 2003 universe. However, to make things worse, Hunt gets mutated into a mutant turtle himself and he ambushes everyone inside of their lair. But then, Donnie, one of the Donnies uses a projectile sort of thingamajig, ray gun thing to zap them to the, to zap themselves to the 1987 universe. When they found themselves trapped inside there, they had no idea what they're doing but to fight some weird looking mutant food thingamajibs. Does that sound anything for the to that one Movie called Nutty Nutcracker? Wait a minute. Why did Turtles throw stole a story element from Nutty Nutcracker? Oh, I get it. That movie that came out in 1999 was mostly about food. Why would this movie steal this idea? Oh, now where was I? Now, as a result of themselves rescuing their version of April... This is why the Turtles have no idea what they're doing. But to realise, the Turtles have to go back to their 2003 world. It's only to be ambushed by the Technodrome itself that is holding Shredder, Krang, and the sidekicks, Bebop and Roxy, hostage. However, 
thanks to the help of Karai, for some reason who returned to this movie, was conducting her own master plan to pretty much get everyone a heel face turn. However, this gets really worse for April and Casey from the 2003 world as they realise they've been ambushed by Crow's attempt at pretty much trapping all the turtles inside of his trap and he conducts an experiment of some sort of a Wizard of Oz-like hurricane where it, this hurricane takes the form of several pictures of all all the past TMNT adventures that can be seen when the turtles were about to be sent back in time via space time continuum. That reminds me of that plot from Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase and Scooby-Doo and the Solid Scoob because they reused these elements that involve around time travel except the form of harm had the modern versions of the mystery in confronted their 1969 versions of themselves. That sounds crazy of how we got in Spider-Verse or No Way Home or even Back to Alvin's Future or Alien Extinction which was like the few first of their kinds to do so. Now, however, this resulted in Splinter discovering that Cry has turned it off and they all escape but they actually get zapped out of it. However, as they enter Hun's building, they are ambushed by Hun, who has stolen their ray gun, but when, but when the two has free wills about to be erased for existence, Hun gets erased after he throws the ray gun towards one of the turtles. And then they are sent, then they had to head their way back to the crater that they started before, and then April and Casey were about to get erased, and then they get zapped to the night ace. 84 world where they are confronted by the 984 turtles so to make things even more complicated the funniest thing is that their version of Shredder only had a cameo appearance in it and then the what they don't realise that their, their world is black and white it looks kind of like Gotham City was empty that's bizarrely strange to make things even more complicated, as the Technodrome shows up destroying it, they realise that they have no idea what to do, but they all have to team up to with their old foes to do their bidding. Their bid to stop Crowd from declaring a genocide of destroying the entire third of us. Wait, does that sound familiar? I know Crowd's characterization is similar to that villain General Mandible from the 98 Drix movie titled Ants. As I noticed, why would both Crow and Mandible commit a genocide towards the turtles and the ants? That does not make sense! <laughs> so, seriously, the funniest thing, but the crazy thing begins to happen as one of the turtles throws Crow into the laser pit which causes Krell into becoming a giant 50 foot sized, kaiju sized, mecha godzilla like version of itself. Does that sound like very familiar to a kaiju sized red panda? I know that's the only funny thing I can see. Does this mean they foreshadowed turning red for no reason? Oh, come on. Are they trying to rip off? Freaky Godzilla! <laughs> okay. I know this was a villainous example of Godzilla, Freshold. I know. Except for the fact that he's about to destroy them all. But then, all of a sudden, Crank somehow enlarges himself in his attempt to beat up Krell. But then it just. But then it was no good. Then. All of a sudden, Crank got reduced to his normal size. And then, what happens? He squeezes the Night A4 titles on his hand. And they're about to be erased for existence. As Karai tries to convince Krell not to pretty much destroy them all. Wow. How graviously cool you've done it, Krell. Is that really familiar to that one super beer, Mandy? 
The woman police says, destroy us all! <laughs> I know, that's hilarious as hell. But then, it gets complicated as one of the terrorist throws some exploding stars to distract Krell. And then, thanks to Beep of Roxy's quick thinking, they manage to blast Krell off away towards his home of death. And then, the movie would end with the 984 toes saying their final words, we strike hard and fade to the night. And that's it. And as a result of this, the movie would end with a Bolivian army cliffhanger ending where the creators, Eastman and Led, would have decided to go and have pizza for themselves. After they put the finishing touches in their code book, they realised that Krell would be nowhere to be seen again. However, that wasn't until Rise of the Team 18, the movie, that he would show up again. Although, I'm guessing this was the very last TMNT adventure that this would be the final time we'll see the 2003 titles. And my biggest complaint is this was their final adventure they would ever have before the reboot timer was thrown into it. But after Nickelodeon acquired it, the fate of the entire franchise may be resolved to be unknown. Although, they, it, they did gave TMNT a nick to its own. Like, there are two nicks in so far. With TMNT as 12 and Rise of TMNT. But, with that it, there is an upcoming movie that is still in development. And I'm hoping Daredevil might show up and She-Hulk and all those Marvel villains might show up in this movie. I'm guessing this would be like a dream come true. But we'll one day find out in the meantime. But all I can say about this movie is this movie is literally the worst animated crossover movie ever made. The animation is bad, the writing isn't that good and the characters are annoying and there's nothing redeemable about it. But I might give this one a 0 out of 10. It's just a waste of time full of wasted potential. And it wasted a perfectly good plot. It's just not my thing. Ugh, this is blatant of how Space Jam and New Legacy came to be. It's all about product placement for both of the movies. Yeah, product placement is my kryptonite. You know, like, Kryptonite was this to Superman. I would have to keep watching it time and time again. And I'd rather give up. If Music Mayor comes out, I would give it up. I know it's all over for me. You know what they really say? I would say goodbye to you all now. Bye-bye.